Hello, everybody. Aiden here, your local NGT instructor, back again with a series of videos, this time with Over to Wire. Now, Over to Wire is an online educational platform that deals primarily with war games and CTF or Capture the Flag style uh, lessons. In this case, we are going to be doing the Bandit series, which is a series of lessons of 34 levels of progression hardness from very simple all the way to mind melting style lessons here uh, and we will be doing that so essentially we are going to go through rudimentary linux fundamentals like very basic command lines to introductory scripting all the way to a dash of pen testing so if you're excited to learn all this i'll see you guys in the lesson first and foremost what exactly is over the wire well let me just go ahead and tell you guys that right now and we're going to go to over the wire.org over here and we are specifically going to be doing a war game with over the wire uh in regards to the bandit series right here and let's see what we got okay uh all right right here and we're going to start off with bandit level zero now everything that we need to uh connect or get started with over the wire is going to be right here on this page the ssh information is going to be right here that's bandit.labs.overthewire.org on port 2220 and it gives us our usernames over here and says that our username is going to be bandit zero and the password is going to be bandit zero okay the objective of this game is to go through this level find the password for the next level so in this case we're at bandit zero we are going to go through this exercise and try to find a password for bandit one so case in point let's go ahead and just get started let's go ahead and do control alt t to open up a terminal and let me go ahead and control shift plus to make this a little bit larger for you guys and save your eyes and let's go ahead and start the ssh command now we are going to go ahead and say ssh and the way how ssh works is ssh and that is going to be username bandit zero at and that is going to be the host name over here so let's go ahead and go get grab that copy this and to paste in the terminal is control shift v for those of you guys out there and we also need to specify uh the the port here if we don't specify a port ssh is going to connect on port 22 by default but we are not connected to default it is going to be 2220 or 2220 or 2220 whichever one you like now in this case let's go ahead and press the enter key and this should negotiate the connection for us oops and i messed up already here guys uh as you guys can see i messed up there because i did not specify the actual uh, i did not specify the actual number of bandit that we have in there so let's copy that Control shift v and i need to specify wait it is zen man at zero four two two zero Oh, I did. Okay. Well, let's, it might, might have been just a, I might have been just a little bit impatient. And what do you know? I was being a little bit impatient. All right. We are going to be given a uh, password prompt here. You might be given something a little different, asking you to accept a certificate. Uh, you just say yes or type in YES. And here, let's go ahead and type in bandit zero. And that is going to get us into the first level. And here, it doesn't really give us much else, but essentially, let me just go ahead and give uh, do a gimme here and let's just do an ls command whenever we're in our system we don't know what's going on typing in ls to see what contents you have in your file directory great all right read me okay so apparently we want we <laughs> apparently this file needs to be read now let's go ahead and see what kind of file this is and i'm just going to type in file read me over here and let's see oh it is an ascii text file of course it can be read quite easily now for those of you guys that are here you probably know this stuff already but essentially the easiest way to read a file in the ellipse command prompt is by using the using the command cat and we just say read me and what do you know at voila we have the password right here for bandit one now let's go ahead and utilize our notes over here okay well, we're just gonna go ahead and do some notes and uh, let's say bandit one or bandit zero was bandit zero that was a password bandit one is in turn going to be this password over here right righty root okay we'll just make sure we have this copied and we can go ahead and press the escape or exit and we can just utilize our previous command and just modify the login for bandit one type in enter and it's asking now for the new password now that's the nh2 password here as evident in the notes control shift v pop that in there and press enter now we should be in bandit one now let's go ahead and utilize the hints over here for bandit one 
And let's says here, the password for the next level is stored in a file called dash located in the home directory. All right, so we are here and we are definitely in our home directory. How do I know we're in our home directory? Because of this little tilde right here, a little squiggly line. And let's go ahead and do an LSLA. And looks like there is definitely a file in there called dash. However, this is going to be one of those gotcha moments over here because if we try to do the same thing, cat dot dash, uh, we are then escaped into, oh no, into an area where we can't really <laughs> do anything. And that's because this is a special character uh, and it basically escapes us from the terminal. What we have to do is be more succinct with Linux and essentially how do we do that? We provide the absolute location of the file and essentially we can just do cat forward slash dash and then the system it says, hey, this is not a special character. I want you, there is literally a file in there called dash. Uh, do not escape. And here we go. We have ourselves the value of the password for bandit2. Bandit2. Let me just pop that in there. All right. Now we have ourselves here. All right. Now let's go ahead and press the escape button or exit. Exit command again. Press the up arrow, and now we are going to log in as Bandit 2. All right, so we're making for good speed, and these are going to be fairly simple exercises, at least for the very first couple of levels, and they will progressively becoming be, become harder and harder as the levels go on to the point where it might melt your brain. Um, but do not fear. We're going to learn lots and lots of stuff, and no, there will be minimal brain melting uh, involved. All right, so we're at Bandit 2, and we are going to look at the clues for Bandit 2. The password of the next level is stored in a file called file called spaces in this file name. Okay, called spaces in the file name. Located in the home directory, and let's go ahead, LSLA. And what do we know? There is definitely a file in here, a fairly small file, 32 bytes. And it's called spaces in the file name. And if we try to do that, cat, spaces in this, well, actually, no. Spaces in this file name we are going to be going oh no cat is going to say cat is going to say hey there's no file directory called no there there's no file no such file directory called in and etc etc it believes that every word in here individual word in here is a particular input or a file now we're gonna we have to make sure and tell cat no, we don't mean that. This is just one file. And the easiest way to do that, guys, is essentially providing a tick command over here and then typing out spaces in the file name and then close it off with another tick right there. And that will tell Linux, no, this is one. Uh, this is actually one input. This is not multiple. And essentially, we can just do type in that. And there we go. That is essentially there. Copy that, and let's take a note of this password now. So we are at bandit3, paste that in there. All right, so, uh, and let's also look at this a little bit more, right? This is space in the file, and we can also do cat. And basically in here, we can provide the slash, the backslash in here after each argument, and that will be considered itself. Um, uh, it, it's an escape character where the space is disregarded by Linux. So, um, this is by using cat spaces or SP and then pressing a the tab. And Linux is so smart these days that it actually does that. Now, don't depend on this because a lot of terminals out there, if you are remote into a terminal, this is dependent on your environment. So depending if you have an older shell environment, this might not be available for you. So rely on using a tick rather than the backslash is being done automatically for you. All right. But in that case, we are good to go. And let's go ahead and just move on over to bandit three. Let's go ahead and press escape or exit, I should say. And we can go ahead and modify our login right here. Bandit three over to wire.org. And let's keep on going. Let's keep this train rolling. Control shift V because we already have this in our clipboard. Press enter and let's see what exactly is the next one. The password for the next level is stored in a hidden file in the in here directory. So let's go ahead. Uh, we are logged into a system. Let's type in ls. There is definitely in here directory. How do we get in there? cd in here. Voila. Now we know that we are in here because our uh, our prompt 
is basically telling us we are in the in here directory or given giving us our working directory. If I type in ls, it doesn't say that there's any files in here. The reason why uh, that is is because hidden files is usually excluded by the ls command. However, we can provide ls la for all, a for all, and we are going to be given every file in here. In Linux and Unix, uh, when you want to hide a file, basically you name a file dot. Uh, with a dot in the very front and it will be considered as hidden it is not really a security measure everybody knows that there isn't you're not hiding it from hackers if you name it dot file <laughs> uh, by default i usually am in the habit of typing lsla to begin with uh, just because of this and essentially we can just utilize our cat command again dot h tab and what do you know we have the dot hidden right there we can just copy this on over to our notes, and that was for Bandit 4. And paste that in there, 2EW, and we can proceed. Now we're making for pretty good speed here, guys, but we are going to probably slow down uh, in the next coming levels because the challenges will become harder and harder. Uh, but let's go ahead and get logged into Bandit 4, and let's see how far we can get into this now here. Uh, it's password, password, control shift V once again, and let's go. All right. So let's go see what the, our hints are for level four. The password for the next level is stored in the only human readable file in the in here directory. Uh, if your terminal is messed up, try the reset command. Well, hopefully we don't have to reset anything. So if we go ahead, take a look at in here directory, let's go ahead CD in here, and we're going to go ahead and do LS. Now LS. Uh, there's a bunch of files in here, but it's looking for human readable only. Now, how do we figure out what is a human readable file? Well, okay, we can basically try to cat every one of these files, uh, but there is another way to do that. Now, we can supply cat, and since it does have a special character right there, okay, let's utilize the knowledge we just learned, uh, dot uh, forward slash absolute location, uh, there you go, and every file starts with file, and essentially... We can supply the wildcard. Now, what this will do, or oh, actually not cat. Let's go ahead and use file. And let's see what each one of these files are. Now, again, file, and here, absolute location, uh, starting with dash and the wildcard. And that this will do is it will run file command on every one of these files here. Now, uh looks like uh everything from file zero, file four is data. Okay, it might not be sensical. And it looks like five and six are extended ASCII. And then we have file seven, which is just plain old ASCII. Okay, so for those of you guys that don't know, we can just type in, we can type in cat file one, <laughs> file zero zero, I mean, file zero zero. And it just gives us these special characters here. And we try again for file one, and we're getting special characters. Let's go ahead and try file five. And special characters, uh, and I'm assuming that file seven is going to be the lucky number. So let's go ahead and modify this for file seven. And what do you know? We have ourselves a login over here. Uh, cancel out of there. Copy that. All right. So let's take a look over at Bandit Five. All right. So we're about to end at the video. We're about the end of the video in terms of length, but uh. All right, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging in there, guys. Uh, these initial lessons are fairly simple. Uh, however, we learned quite a few things. We learned about how to use the file command. We know how to change directories. We knew about absolute locations, and we know about how to use the, uh, how to use cat uh, from these lessons here. Now, progressively, just wanna let you guys know, we're gonna do another set of videos going from levels five all the way through 10, depending on how long each one of the levels are. But I encourage you guys to log in to I encourage you guys to log into over the wire and do these exercises yourselves. There is no substitute for getting your hands on a keyboard and essentially using Linux for yourself. As I said before, you can read every book on Linux out there, but if you don't put your hands on a keyboard and actually interact with the system, chances are you're not going to remember anything. All right. So once again, guys, this is Aiden with NGT Academy, and I hope to see you guys in the next set of videos for these bandit uh, exercises. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Jacob Hess here. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you, 
If you're truly serious about your career in information technology, then be sure to check out our IT engineer training programs at www.zero2engineer.com.